How are we doing everyone? It is Friday the 13th so I'm hiding away from whatever bad luck might be out there today. I'm in the workshop trying to do a tidy up. Clear my feet so I can continue working away on the Lotus bits and I realise it's been a long time, um, far too long since I did a video with any progress, any updates. I have been working away on it um, but part and parcel to that has been a load of uh, workshop upgrades to my garage. New tools and equipment to work on the car so I wanted to go through them, share them with you today and talk a little bit about the different bits and pieces that I've got. First up, new addition, 30 litre ultrasonic cleaner. Um, this came off a seller on eBay, I'll put their uh, shop details in the description. It's made by Creeworks, I think it's called. So a really good big size container. Um, something worth bearing in mind if you're looking at buying one, the usable space in them is actually smaller um, than the headline dimensions of the tank so they'll often list the dimensions of the the tank but really anything that you're fitting in needs to fit within the basket that goes in it you don't particularly want things sitting directly um on the, the shell of the ultrasonic bath but a really useful piece of kit now I, ideally i would love to have a parts washer in addition to the ultrasonic cleaner but if you look around i think it's fair to say i am completely out of space for any more kit in this workshop um, and I committed not to spend any more money on stuff, any more significant money on stuff until I get my new workshop um, in a while. More on that at a different time. Next upgrade was blast cabinet. So this, I can't remember the capacity on it, but it's an SGS um, blast cabinet. That's there, I can put a link to their website in the description as well. Um, I got this it's been modified a touch, so overall I'm, I'm really happy with it. Um, it. It does the job great, been using it on suspension components, etc. Um, I'll turn the light on on that, just so we can see inside it. But I did have to do some modifications. Um, first thing that I would note on it when I got it, it came with this fitting, um, which feeds to the air hose inside, that's the air line in to the lance didn't come with the fitting here um, for the airline. Thankfully, I had one of those sitting around anyway. But this is essentially how it came. It's got the light inside. There's a screen protector on the lid so you can uh, so you don't knacker the glass with any um, overblast. And, and you've got the gun. It comes with a selection of um, different nozzle sizes um, for the gun. And Got to using it, did a few bits on it and realized it needed some upgrades. The first upgrade was actually the compressor. Um, my small original compressor is just there in behind. It just didn't have the power to run it. So again, another SGS um, component. I think I got that in their uh, Black Friday November sale. So that came through, much more powerful, um, much bigger receiver tank. I think it's 100 or 120 liters and a good twin piston motor on the top. So we've got plenty of air volume coming through and it can supply the, the blast cabinet with the volume of air at the pressure that it needs. Um, first one I got I actually had a leak on the receiver bung, but SGS were great. They, they swapped it out for me and gave me a new one. Probably the only word of caution, if that's the right term, um, I would have for the compressor is if you're thinking about getting one, it depends what electrical supply you have available. Um, Although power-wise, that should be fine on a 13 amp supply. On first startup, it's an induction motor that's in um, the air compressor. So it pulls a bit more than 13. And in my garage, it's touch and go. If I have anything else at all really running, I will trip the electrics. So if you have an older power supply, that may be something you want to, to be aware of. You really want to be running it off a 16 amp minimum, I think, to avoid it from, from popping the breakers when it first starts up. So with the bigger compressor, got to using the blast cabin on a few bits and pieces, and there was a few upgrades that I wanted to make. On the back here, um, there's two air, the air, that's the air feed into the hose that actually blasts the high pressure media in, but there's this filter here to allow the air inside the cabinet to vent, and there's also a filter on the back. Now that's a, a plate covering it. People will tend I think to be right-handed, so you've got the lance in your right hand shooting that way. The media tends to hit there, and this cover just stops the filter on the back from getting a direct blast off the lance. 
what I found was the entire cabinet was pressurizing and you could actually, with the cover clamped down, you could see it trying to lift and it would blast little bits of grit out around the sides. And what I also found was down at the bottom, there wasn't a perfect seal around here. You can see a little bit of dust residue on there um, from back when it was originally being set up. And I was finding grit coming through here and I realized you could actually see light from inside the cabinet coming through there um, at times. So I would see grit building up on the work surface. So you can just about see it in the corner here. I stripped everything out, gave it a wipe down with some acetone and just taped the corners. That's just normal duct tape. That's all that's been required and I've not had any more problems since. It just seals it a little bit better. Around the back, I went for some different upgrades. So I bought this plastic box. It's just a plastic um, electronics box. Got that off eBay. Cut a hole out um, in the back of it so that I could stick it on over the hole that's in the back of the cabinet. And then put a hole in the bottom to join on to this tube. That tube runs down here into a fantastic little center aisle purchase. And this is a charcoal barbecue canister. So the idea of that is you attach your vacuum cleaner to the canister and there's another filter inside this. If I pop these clips off, I can show you that. So there's a filter inside there and air gets pulled into this through this extra tube. So the idea of this is when you're clearing out a charcoal barbecue, you would run the feed through that canister to stop fine charcoal dust going in and clogging the bag in your normal vacuum cleaner. So I'm using it for the same thing, attached to this Draper shop vac, which I got from Screwfix um, on discount. I think it was like 25 quid. Um, so with that hooked up, when I turn the vacuum on, it will actually pull the gloves into the, the chamber of the blast cabinet. And it really helps with keeping the dust down inside the cabinet when I'm blasting, so you can see what you're doing um, a lot better. And it also means that there's less problem with dust managing to find its way um, out of the, the top door. So really worthwhile upgrade, and I think all in it was about 50 quid um, for the project box, for the charcoal canister and the shop vac. So a bit of a no-brainer if you're going to be using um, a dust blasting cabinet, a grit blasting cabinet, sorry, inside your own garage. Next up was some workbench upgrades. I don't have enough space on the workbench to have some things mounted permanently and the grinder is one of them. So that's a Titan grinder. Um, I think it was from Screwfix. If the link down below says uh, tool station, then maybe it was tool station, but yeah, I think Screwfix. So it's got brass wheel attachment on it and a grinding wheel. I don't tend to use the grinding wheel if I'm honest, but the brass wheel attachment is great. When you get components out of the blast cabinet and you just want to buff up the finish a little bit before you start painting them. This wheel is fantastic um, for that. So I run that on it. Smaller parts. I had previously had my little center oil park side hand grinder again. You know, just quite clearly meant to be a Dremel copy, but fantastic piece of kit. Loads of attachments available for that. And happily, most of them are interchangeable with this high spec unit that I got off of Amazon. The reason I bought this, it was recommended um, by the bloke on the Restore It channel. It's a bit more powerful and that's that's really it. It's just got a bit more bit more grunt behind it than the, the hand one. This can one this one runs on battery whereas this is plug in so that's probably the reason. But just for finishing components off and getting the, the finest little bits out of them before painting, that's that's the one. So final upgrade. Um, I mentioned painting. A lot of the components I've been uh, refurbishing of late have been things like suspension components. So blasting all the corrosion off them and then getting a coat of paint onto them to protect them going forwards. Initially, this was my paint booth. <laughs> so it's just a, you know, it's just a temporary workbench. Bit of paper or plastic down on the top of that, put the components on it, spray them. It works, but far from perfect. You can see the amount of overspray there is on that. And every time I was spraying stuff on it, I was just conscious that I was just spraying everything in the area around it. And also, you know, you put something down onto it, you spray it, but then you need to flip it over to spray the other side. And then you're going to need two coats 
and between each you need to wait half an hour so it doesn't stick itself either to the table or to the paper that you've got down. Just generally slowing up the process, not getting great results. So I upgraded to this. I'm struggling to get it in shot a little bit. It's uh, 1.7 meters high. And yes, it is a temporary wardrobe from B&M. So I know what you're thinking, but it's not stupid if it works. So I've got the shelves down the side. Um, I can store um, bits of paper and stuff that I've been using when I've been painting on. I've got all my spray paints down there. Okay, I've got a Pella pump for oil changes. It is a bit of extra storage. But the useful part in here is I can use the clothes rail up the top. Um, I've suspended a rail a bit further down just to get things lower. I can use that to suspend parts when I'm spraying them. Um, you can see the paint in the back. And I appreciate it doesn't have ventilation or anything, but you're spraying in with all three sides enclosed. So the paint tends to go that way and stay that way and either stick to the back or fall to the ground rather than circulating within the garage and covering everything in paint. So we just use the clothes rails to hang the parts from on the hooks. These are just fashioned from some garden wire, um, just garden fence wire from tool station. So I've got a roll of that, a couple of different sizes depending on the strength. Now, don't get me wrong. I've said it doesn't have extraction in it. It's not ideal. So because of the lack of extraction, I still wear a mask. Um, whenever I'm spray painting stuff, even though I'm just using rattle cans that don't atomize as much as a, a proper spray gun. But it keeps the mess down um, a hell of a lot. Um, and at the same time, it's fairly small components that I'm spraying in it. I'm, I'm never going to try and suspend a cleaned up engine block in there or an entire panel or wing or you know something like that off a car. You know, It's not for big bits, it's just for, for spraying smaller stuff. But a really useful addition and just to try and keep the workshop a bit cleaner.